Ambulance service. Is the patient's breathing? We're back on the front line. We're sort of, we're sort of being immobilised. Following Scotland's paramedics. The top floor fire in a block of four. Got an 80-year-old female who's fallen outside. He's been stabbed. Is the attacker still nearby? I need you to say the word now every time her chest rises. Every day, they save lives. Hi there. We are the first people that people see uh -huh. when life can get quite desperate. You're OK, you're not going to fall. You sure? 100%. And every day, they face new challenges. Oh, oh they're shields. going in with shields. We're expected to dip into everything, mental health, trauma, medical. Ah, but now we're being stretched even further. Unbelievable. Listen, I can understand you without swearing. I laugh in the face of danger. Sometimes you're seeing people at their absolute worst. You're fine. You're fine. Listen, you're in safe hands now, all right? The end of the shift, I can go home knowing that I've made a bit of a difference. This is Scotland's ambulance service, serving over five million people in every corner of the country. This time we're with crews in Isla, Aberdeen, and Glasgow. Team leader in special operations. I just like helping people and giving back. You know, it's just it's a, it's a very rewarding job, and it's nice to know that you've you've helped somebody. Today, he's attending a road traffic collision. A driver is trapped in her car. My man's going to go ahead to the get up. Uh, mobile item, we're going to try and get out. But she's seen that the pain she's feeling is going right through to her back as well. It transpired that I think the car had been hit with a lorry. So, yeah, there's quite a bit of damage to the car. I want a head for this one. Aye. You know, just to keep her in that aye, position aye. to get her out. Wanting to go for a side removal or what? I'm going to try a head first. We'll get her on the head and just slide it into the boat. Right, okay, we'll like, we just take a lead for you, sorry. Um, I think that would be the easiest point to A head is a, a mobilisation device that says, um, placed behind the patient at their back, and it supports the spine. It's slotted down in behind the patient's back in the chair, and then it's clipped in. Pain relief. Pain, we've right. not given any pain relief. I've got pain frogs to give it. Have we shot a pain frogs? That'd be good, mate. Pain is a relatively new drug within the ambulance service, or certainly the Scottish ambulance service, and it was kind of rolled out to the assault teams initially. Pain is used in trauma cases, and we find that it's very, very, very useful. Hello. Hiya. I'm Paul. What's your name? Avon. Avon. I'm one of the paramedics from the ambulance service. Okay. How's your pain just now? In my chest. It's like, as if it's crossed in. Right. In my back. It's been right through my back. Right, so tell me the worst pain ever and zero none. Can you score it for me? Oh, it's very high. Very high. Big sooks of that, honey. Big sooks. Can I kind of get you something a bit stronger? Aye. Is it so you're taking a deep breath? Aye. Aye. Really Go and take another look at that from me just now, if you can. Give me that arm up there. Okay, She was uh, struggling um, to, to, to use the Prenthrox appropriately. That could be because um, she had pain in her chest from maybe the, the, the seat belt or the airbag deployment. Or she could have had respiratory issues that kind of prevents her from inhaling quite deep. I can Feel. see better. You can see, you can see better. better. <laughs> I think it was all bloody. It's no bloody new. Sorry, honey. Oh, is that so? Yeah. so here? Oh, no, right from my... You're pulling my torso. Cut the roof off. Huh? Cut the roof off. Aye. Well, I don't think we're going to get away, OK? It's going to have to be, isn't it? Aye. OK. 
cool. Initially, we came up with a plan for extrication for that patient, and plan A was to use the CAD. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the CAD in place without causing the patient any more pain, and I felt that our plan B would be to take the roof off the car and use a spinal board um, to extricate the patient. Right, everyone can hear that. What? They're going to get a convertible. Oh, no. Aye. See the big orange thing they're just putting across? Aye. Right, that's just to protect you, because we'll need to break your windscreen, OK? Aye, that's So fine. it might get a wee bit dark. That's fine, you know what you're doing. Aye, uh, well, at least somebody does. I trust you. I've just been told, hold her head and don't let her move. <laughs> I trust you. That's my job here. Don't he's let her move. He's well, isn't he? I'm leaving the fire uh, brigade, I'm just kidding on. You can't see me. I know. At an RTC like that, the SOP teams, even divisional crews, work alongside the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service all the time. It's very important that we have that understanding of how we're managing that patient and how we're extricating the patient so that everybody's working off the same hymn sheet. Oh. Pain are here? Aye. Right, OK. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Nice day for a flight. <laughs> or if I just jinxed it. Fraser and Billy are Helimed paramedics based at Glasgow Airport. Yes, hello, Gamma Ox, uh, Helimed 5 here. Uh, we have just departed Glasgow Airport en route to Isla Airport at an ETA uh, in approximately 30 minutes. Roger, Helimed 5. Today, they are preparing for a journey to Isla, over 70 miles from their base. Uh, outside air temperature, weather and icing. OK, plus nine degrees, uh, clear of cloud at the moment, uh, no ice. Cruise check complete. Lovely, thank you. On Isla, they will meet Helen, who is 23 weeks pregnant. But she's suffered a bleed. She had a known condition called placenta previa. It can develop into an emergency situation, and she was having some bleeding, which is something that needs monitored pretty quickly. By helicopter, it's about 35, 40 minutes or so of flight time. And it's just patients who require higher level care. There's only so much that Isla Hospital can do, so they need to be transferred. Either the RAH or sometimes the Queen Elizabeth, depending on what's wrong with them and which hospitals have the right specialist care. Done that plate, it's all okay. That point there, it's the first one. Yep. 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 That's, that's what. Yep. There's a lot of remote areas in Scotland. There's not a lot of access for roads. And there's a lot of rural communities that require a helicopter to help out. <laughs> I was getting me confused. I was like, he's flying upside down. On board the Helimed, Fraser and Billy are not just paramedics, they are vital to the operation of the aircraft. We set the route for the pilot. We do the navigation pilot. Once he's engaged the autopilot, it flies to where we set it to go. Uh, let's get some final checks done, please. Uh, final checks are well radar. We are essentially paramedics, but most of our training is more to do with the aviation and assisting the pilot in actually flying the aircraft and navigating the aircraft and getting the aircraft to where the paramedics are needed. But we know about the runway, so we're going to break off for the main apron in regard to a helipad for that. Roger, check complete. Thank you. The, the call had came from the midwife, so they already had some sort of clinical contact right away. You're concerned that how much she's bleeding because that could be a life-threatening problem that we've got, either in flight or, or in hospital, hopefully later on. Yeah. Uh, I've not seen an ambulance. No. What are the plant by car? That shows you how urgent this is if a patient has gained by car. You're a lovely patient. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, I get a quick story from you, is that all right? Yeah. 23 weeks and four days. She has a known placenta previa. Okay. And she's had a bleed. 
Okay. How did the first pregnancy go? Was that was that all right? No, no it problems with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fine. Cool. I did end up there was a. He was measured as a large baby at 33 weeks. Right, okay. So, and then at 37, it sort of, he tail, his growth had tailed off. So ah, okay. So I did get induced early. Sure. He was fine there. Um, so currently the bleeding settling. Um, okay. We just like her off. Fine. To the mainland. So yeah. We needed scans and. Sure. Okay. No problem. Paul from the special operations team is tending to Yvonne, who is trapped in her car. His fire service colleagues need to cut the roof off to get her out safely. Hi. That's it. Oh, yeah, doing well, honey. Doing well. One, two, three, look. That's it, Lord. Get With the roof safely removed, the team's attention turns to free Yvonne. No. But she's still in a lot of pain. Again, take a deep breath for me. That's it, honey. Your analgesia for paramedics is the gold standard is morphine. That's as far as the pain relief goes for a paramedic. So we tried on a pen throat, it wasn't working, so we upped it to, to morphine. So we IV cannulation and give us some morphine. Oh. I was going to get the rest of that morphine, mate, as well. Yvonne, we're just getting ready to bring you out, right? We just get that morphine a wee bit, look, five minutes to settle, five to see if it can. Right. Yeah, it's quite sore, so. Thanks, Liam. Uh, give you five minutes and we'll get it sorted, all right? In that situation, patient management is, is a priority. What I mean by patient management is making them comfortable and making sure that they're in as little pain as possible. It's Paul. Uh, you uh, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's me now. Pain is a held at all. It moves a, a tiny wee bit. It, it is held, that's, that's good. Just there. lie back, one, well, that's you. Right. One right back, that's you. Right, right. Doing well, doing well, that's you. Well done. Have they already? Brace, move! Just watch our legs like we're stuck here. They're stuck. Nothing stuck there. Yeah. Can you talk that see that wee box underneath? Ah, here we go. That's it. Well Better than that. Right. Just watch our trainers right. here as well, guys. Right. Right. You want feet? I was going to add your trainers with feet. Right. Ready, please, slide. I think Avon was more relieved that she was out of the car than me. <laughs> I think we kind of we stuck a wee rapport with Avon and kind of we a good wee laugh in the car and stuff. Are you still there? Yes. Nah, get that sun out your eyes. Right, we'll get you into the ambulance now. Right, ready, one, two, three. Right, cheers, guys. Cheers, lads, thank you. Thanks, Paul. No worries, mate. Just to see Yvonne settled and comfortable when she was out of that vehicle was nice. My Java cake bar's melted. That's my lunch. I'm Aberdeen born and bred, and I love Aberdeen. It's a great station to work out of, and everyone's here for the right reasons to help people and try and make a difference in people's lives. So we're going for a 53-year-old male who has had chest pain since half past three this morning. The early hours of the morning are always typical times for people to have cardiac events. So. We'll go down and see what his ECG is saying and um, work out a plan for him. You definitely find if this happens in the middle of the night, they will hold off till the morning because they don't want to bother anybody. They'll phone the GP and the first thing the GP will say is 999 ambulance and that's when we end up going to call. So we're in here. Hello, Ronald. I'm Scott, and this is Rachel. What's been happening, pal? Right, I've been like this since about half past three this morning. Okay. And all I did was roll over, and I'm speaking sore when I'm breathing, and I'm itching, and I'm just the pain. It has eased off. 
Okay. My, I'm, I'm, I, I can feel I'm um, spinning. Can, um, okay. So go and describe this pain to me. What does it feel like? Somebody's sticking a knife in me. Okay. So it's like a sharp stabbing pain. But it stays. He was a little bit distressed, but you know we did just de-escalated the situation and kept him calm, assessed him, and, and kind of took it from there. So, are we OK to give you a wee examination? Would that be all right? I, I'm pretty stressed. This is now losing okay. my mum. Oh, dear. Sorry to hear about that, Paul. Well, it is. It's not helping us because it's basically the same symptoms. So, it's a bit... So, that'll be worrying you then, Paul, eh? OK. She died of my eyes. Oh, me. That's no good at all. Bad breathing and a heart attack. Mm. It's just a nightmare. I think because it had been a matter of weeks since it had happened to his mum, he'd been in that situation, it was very fresh, which ultimately made it an awful lot more worrying for him because he just related it all back to his mum. Can I just take a wee sample of butter with your finger? Is that all right? Ronald, if it's OK, I'm going to put some sticky pads on your shoulders, your tummy and the centre of your chest so we can do an ECG, all right? Just... You don't just do the way you thought you do. No worries, bro. An ECG is an electrical cardiogram of the heart. It gives us views of the heart from all around about it to make sure everything's working properly. So if you sit as still as you can for me. Don't move an inch, pal. We look for abnormalities, any sort of like heart blocks or we're thinking the gentleman's having a heart attack, um, a myocardial infarction, then we think potentially there could be elevation in some of the leads, and that's what we look for in an ECG. Just a little bit of elevation in one of your leads that we want to get checked out. Right, can I start two squats this under your tongue, pal? Okay. Lift your tongue to the top of your mouth. This gentleman had a few changes in his ECG. The problem we've got is we don't have previous ECGs to check on. So that's where we use kind of our local cardiology department that we can send the ECGs to them and they can check back the previous records to see if there's any acute changes. Hello, it's Scott, one of the paramedics. I'm just phoning about an ECG I've just sent through to yourself. So have you got it? So there was a few alarm bells that we want to double check with him. So he's phoned because of an episode of central chest pain that's been ongoing for five hours. A left sided into his left arm and into his jaw. So we sent the BCG on to the hospital and they got back to us first to take him to the, to the emergency department. Right, how's that pain doing just now? It's getting less. I'm managing to move. Yeah, you're getting a bit more movement in that arm, right? Yeah, it's say a bit tolerable now. OK. Yeah. The patient was going to have to go to hospital regardless because although our ECGs are very good, and they have a, a close look into the heart, they don't always just show up if the patient is having a cardiac event. Packaged and ready to go. That's some amount of records you've got, by the way. Goodness me. Aye, Mr Weller, he's talking a lot on the videos. Who? Paul Weller. Paul Weller. Nice. Could you maybe nip back for this phone? He's left his phone in the bed. Another wee tilt back here. Oh. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks. I'll tell her and go back into the flat and fold it. Just relax this hand, Papa. And then sharp starts coming up again, OK? He's asking if you can phone the phone. Don't put your balls in this. <laughs> <laughs> Still relevant to the forty years on. Uh, same thing doing it for the my life. Is it Paul? Uh, same thing done. Never changed it. Quite a good thing to me. Top two now, absolutely. Right, so what score are you giving the pain just now? About a four or some get it's getting less. It's definitely getting better. Right. Happy? So we'll just pop him up to Amy. Given recent history with his mum passing away from a heart attack and things like that, that'll be playing on his mind too, so... Yeah, bless him. But he's done the right thing. Just to hear, I'll see you, Nee. 
Mm -hmm. So the hospital is a bit busy at the moment, so Rachel will go in and have a wee chat with the department and see what's happening. System. Hello. It's good. So, we're going into cohort. Oh. I'm getting to jump to you. Well, the corridor up by EV that the ambulance service are currently manning, and, and basically if there's no beds in the department, you can go into cohort, and then you're continued to be in the after by an ambulance. Chase, so you can go and tell somebody yeah. else. Shit. When we're sitting stacking, that's us stuck at the hospital for however long it takes for us to get into the department. department. You know, and it's having massive knock-on effects on our community, our response times. It's a massive pressure on the service. Do you want to get fuel first or do you want to get eat first? Do you want angry Rachel or not angry? Want to get food. <laughs> I'm joking. And you never want to meet hungry Rachel. Ever. I need kept topped up. I need to be kept topped up. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm scared just speaking about it. I will be on my best behaviour. No hunger for three days. Mm. No comment. Use the word feral. That's a bit harsh. Truth though. Return for rest. Beautiful words. Helimed paramedics Fraser and Billy are on Isla. Their patient Helen is 23 weeks pregnant, but she's suffered a bleed. There's a handle here. Uh, you can step on this bit, and then up that bit, and then I'll get you to sit on that chair there, if that's okay. Where are you going, darling? What you need to know is the trail. Good How much blood loss was there? Just, I, uh, I assume it's all been passed to the RH anyway, but... Yeah, uh, it's been a moderate loss on pad. Okay. Um, just done a pad check and a set obs before she left. Lovely. Quite happy for her to... Cool, and obs been okay? Yeah, obs have been fine. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Uh, Helmut Fly West Ham. Uh, this is patients loaded up on uh, aircraft at Isla. We activate the helipad and get a yellow response ambulance at the RAH in about 35 minutes from now, Thomas. So, I've picked the Bronco, thanks. So, uh, I'll get your belt on mm -hmm. and I'll get your headset in a wee second. So, let, I'll take this jacket out of the way. Okay. Well, a bit more comfortable. And I'll just sit on the bed down there. In the back of the helicopter, it's quite restrictive in space, but we've got all the equipment that an ambulance has got. We've got some of the equipment that a critical care department has got that if we're bringing a, a medical team with us, we can use. How old's your first baby? Two. Nice. Two. And uh, do you know what you're having this time? No, no. surprise. Uh, you, was that a surprise last time? Yep. Ah, oh, that's nice. And like everything always was set for girls, like girls stuff just seemed to fall upon us, names and all that sort of stuff, and he was a wee boy. This time I have no idea what it is, but it's a troublesome one with that. It's a wee horish. Okay, it is clear behind. And... B. Are you to isolate? I'll have a quick chat with the patient, if that's all right. Yep, we'll isolate you now. Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, that's good. You all right? Cool. Yeah. Feeling okay? Yeah. Sure. Just a wee bit teary Emotional. leaving. Yeah. Just going yourself as well, so something is getting taken out of your home environment, isn't it? And uh, it can be a wee bit emotional. But we'll look after you, so don't need to worry about that. Thank and you. the RH are very good. Well, you've all been there before, have you? So, cool. Just as we were starting to take off, you could tell she was getting a wee bit weepy. I think just to do with leaving our our, our, our partner, uh, I assume who was still on the island, can get a wee bit emotional and I think nothing too unexpected, but just reassure her, comfort her and tell her that uh, we'll look after her. Hopefully the cloud will thin out a wee bit and you'll see some better views. 
my mum tells me she would never, unless she was like dying, she would not be getting in a helicopter. So that we do have to reassure patients, tell them it's safe. I believe how quickly we got up so high. Like it was, we were down low and then next minute we were up yeah, so high. Yeah. Like, well. Climbing to a higher altitude in a helicopter doesn't just mean a better view, it also changes the air pressure around you. Oh no, it's just the pressure. I'm sorry to find out. Apologies on every thought. No, no. Sorry, I'm so sorry. No, don't be that. She wanted a wee drink. I should have realised, but when she opened her orange juice, it kind of spouted and squirted all over the place, so relaxed the atmosphere a little bit. What do you do with your spare time, Helen? Run after a toddler. Oh, good. Soon to be two, that'll be exciting. I know. So, no, I work part-time, so two and a half days at work, which okay. I really enjoy. So that's like my me time to get oh, out yeah, of the house yeah. for a bit. And uh, the rest of the time, she's mainly looking after me one. Yeah. All right, in the back. Yeah, we're all good. Just been yeah. chatting away. Yeah, good. This is descending over Pew. Lovely. But of course, they're over Larks. The road from my lap would be a ferry, but it would be a, an all day trip. But we do it in 35 minutes. It's just in a straight line, essentially, uh, avoiding the odd cloud and the odd hill. There we go. So these people are still entitled to a level of care that the NHS provides. Get your hood up. Sorry, as you're standing in no, the No, don't be daft. Sorry, I've got a hat. It's all right. Will be uh, the, the quickest, easiest, and safest way of getting these people from one place to another while still providing a, a safe paramedic level of care. Hopefully, show a uh... I think Fraser or maybe a Billy would be a nice name for a child. <laughs> yeah. Don't think so. Just remind her that my name's Fraser. If she has a wee boy, that would be uh, Fraser's a nice name. Yeah, it's a good Scottish name. currently minus nine, so they've got nine waiting with no, no beds. So it's not a good situation in 101 When I started, you could go into a night shift and you'd be lucky if you turned a wheel or you turned three or four jobs, but now you're in for a night shift and you're out pretty much for your whole shift. So just to confirm that, there's he's fallen downstairs outside the back of his house and he's not conscious. Yeah, that's all okay. Ace, thank you so much. We're just virtually around the corner, really. Well, we'll go and see what the scoop is. Is it somebody that you're with or is it somebody you found? Or... No, it's my husband. It's your husband, okay, okay. The reason for the man's fall soon becomes clear. You've been talking a lot. Oh, so is he back in the house now? No. How you doing? I don't know. What's happening here, pal? I think I've just hit my head or something. Had a bit too much to drink. No, when we first got out the back door and seen he was lying like a, in a crumpled mess on the concrete, there was quite a large wet patch around about him, and I wasn't sure if initially if that was blood, but it turned out to be like a leaking drain that was behind him, so he was lying in the soaking wet. What oh. stairs did he fall on there? The big ones we yeah. came up. The big ones we came up? Yeah, three times. So he's... He fell over on the pavement up here once, and he fell over on the grass over here as well. He kind of obvious kind of facial injuries from a fall and was intoxicated. And lost consciousness at any point? Yeah. Been so alert. is it, you know, has he like tumbled head first, gone like rolled down the stairs, or is he holding himself? Uh, he was like rocking forward, and then he would just fall backward. Can you show us which ones you mean it? 
he was like here. Uh huh. And he went back like that. Okay. And he and he's physically gone from the top of here right to the bottom of here. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. And then another time he got halfway and fell back down. Okay. And it. And at any point when he's fallen, has he hurt himself? He goes, ow. Okay, but like, as in, has he bashed his head and then, you know, his head's been bleeding or anything like that? I have yeah, that blood's all over his face. I don't know when that happened. Okay. Alcohol is a big thing in our society. Most people can control it, some people can't, and that's when they end up potentially in the back of our ambulance, whether it's from a fall, an assault, or just too much alcohol. How's your legs feeling? Legs are all right. Yeah, and how, what about the back of your head and your neck and things? Any um, pain in here? Not really, no. Yep. Just got a bad ear. A what? A bad, bad head. A bad head. Okay. Yeah. Aye, right. bad head as as in like you've bumped your head or you've got a headache. Um, I've got a headache. Hmm? You've got a headache. Yeah. Where are you going just now, pal? Are you trying to get up? I was wondering where the bed was. Well, your bed's certainly not outside here, that's for sure. What do you think you've had to drink today? We have all pints, maximum. Okay, all right. Where right. Am I? Where do you think you are? Oh, I don't know. Well, where, where do you think you are? Have yeah. a wee look around you, pal. I'm in Scotland. Oh, what city do you live in? What city? Snake Cook, what was it? It's from this. I think it was a, a combination of two things. The alcohol and maybe because he... <sighs> I think it would be unfair to say that he was embarrassed of the situation. I don't think it was that at all. But I think it was more just like he didn't want to be in the situation. So he was just a bit lax with what he was kind of saying to us. What do you think he's had to drink today? Okay, I've been at work all day. Yeah. So um, I think he's had at least one case of Strongbow cider. Yeah. And half a bottle of whiskey. So okay. I can see in the house. Okay. And then um, when I picked him up, he was in the pub. So okay. from work, when I found him, he was in um, drug parks. So I okay. don't know how many pints he had there. Okay, so he's and had quite a substantial amount of alcohol. And, and, and he's been doing it for two weeks. I think the partner was kind of, she was struggling with him mm -hmm. a bit. And I think that had an influence on it as well. It was more, she dealt with it kind of all day. And then it maybe got a bit too much for her. Uh, Wait about in your back store. Got all of it. And is it been? Is this new? Is this new today? Is it always um, sore? Yeah, yeah. Tell me a bit more about this. Hey, is it new today? This is new from falling. New from falling today. Okay, yeah. but you definitely don't have any pain in your neck. No. Okay. Half of the Somebody collapsed along the road, I have to go to you. Eh? Aye. Oh, for goodness sake. We'll need to share the kit. Oh, right, okay. Right, walk with me. Another man has collapsed outside a pub nearby. Scott now needs to attend to him. You know, you can't have somebody unwell along the road and, and just ignore it and deal with your patient. So the common sense approach is that we split up as a crew. One will go one way and one will go the other. I'm just going to take the bag in this out. Right, OK. <laughs> right, listen, yes. you need to work with me here, right? Yes. And I need to get you up these steps, um, OK? I mean, it could make the job more difficult, but in, in the situation that, that we were in with the gentleman. That's it, next step. We'd kind of done the work and we were in the process of just getting ready to go to hospital. Move up the bed. All right. That's it. And then swing your legs up and round. Yeah. Right. <coughs> really, it didn't need to of us. And it was a, a, a fortunate situation that that was the case. But obviously, had it been something a bit more tricky, a bit more difficult with a, you know, a more unwell patient or anything like that, then yeah, it, it could have been difficult, yeah. 
So can we recall today's events yet? Can we, have we yeah. remembered what's been happening? No idea. Okay. Scott, meanwhile, has attended to the other patient at the nearby pub, who has also been drinking heavily. Unbelievable. So I'll go up to the gentleman, he's uh, heavily intoxicated, missed a step in the pub and got a head first off the pavement. So he's got some facial injuries, been unresponsive, so we've got an ambulance crew down to um, check him over and they'll get him up to the hospital for a wee check up. Try and stay nice and still, I know it's not fine. Somebody poking your nose, but get rid of all this dry blood. Yeah. What the hell's happened, big? Like? Well, that's, I don't know. We're still trying to piece this all together. It sounds like there's maybe a bit more going on than meets the eye, or what we know about, with regards to the way that you're feeling and things. And you drinking like this all day, every day, for multiple days at a time, isn't any good without any some support in there. All right? And they're not drinking. What? And they're not eating. Yeah. They don't eat. They've gone for the past few days, haven't we? Past few weeks? The only reason we ask these questions is because we care. You know, was it a one-off? It didn't really add up to being a one-off and all that kind of thing. And I think just by saying there's more than meets the eye it was probably me kind of politely saying, just be honest with me, I'm, I'm here to help you. You're good to go. Yeah, pal, thanks. So we're going to Aberdeen Royal. We're just going to a &E, pal. Okay, just for a brief visit. A brief visit, hopefully, yes. It's a case of being in the, the, the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time, depending on the category of the job. In our call numbers, alcohol-related calls are quite high. When you speak to members of the public about the job, they oh, the drunk folk must really annoy you. Weekends must be horrendous to work with, but you can deal with as much drunks on a Monday night as you can on a Saturday night. We're seeing people sometimes at their absolute worst. We're turning up to the worst day of their lives. And, you know, we're there to look after them. They're, we're there to try and make a difference. No, have a seat in here. Look, I'll cheer you. All right. Have a seat in here. Good lad. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Call handlers at Scotland's three ambulance control centres are at the forefront of the nation's emergency response network. Is the patient awake? Okay, right. Okay, you need to bear with me. What's the address of the emergency, sorry? Communication is definitely a big part. If you can't communicate with people, then it's... It's not going to be the ideal job for yourself. Okay, tell me exactly what's happened. It's not only about listening to what they're telling you, it's maybe listening to a background noise or listening to what's going on in the background and just being that observant way that you physically can't see it, but you're just listening. The caller is panicking. He explains a woman has collapsed and is frothing at the mouth. So she's still twitching at the moment? The woman is having a seizure. You're doing really well, OK? The help's coming as quickly as they can. Now, has she had more than one fit in a row? It does make it a lot more difficult when there's so much going on in the background and you're just trying to provisionally get the right care for the patient and trying to essentially manage a scene until the crew get there. It can be really challenging. Is she breathing at the moment? She's not breathing normally, OK? How old is she? The patient's history is complicated. The seizure began after an injection of cocaine, but she also suffers from epilepsy. So we're going to check her breathing together to make sure it's all right. So when I say the word go, watch her closely and say the word now every time her chest rises. Are you ready? Okay, go. 
So it's really important that we always do the breathing tool if a patient's unconscious. Next one. Next one. From a caller's point of view, to them, if they're taking a breath, they are breathing, whereas it might not be that they're breathing effectively for themselves. Next one. Thank you. In this case, when we'd done the breathing tool, it came back that the patient's breathing was elevated, which means that we just monitored their condition. Now, if she stopped fitting, I need you to turn her gently onto her side, and as she wakes up, reassure her and tell her not to get up or walk around. Resources across NHS Scotland remain under severe pressure. So, again, that's just an average delay time in the area, OK? So it would be the nearest available crew we can get to her. It's really difficult to tell a caller that they could be waiting up to four hours on an ambulance arriving. I think when they phone at that time, they don't realise that there's so many other emergencies maybe going on in that area or in that city or in that town. So it's really difficult when you're having to tell someone you could potentially wait up to four hours for a medical emergency. So what do you want to do? Do you want to wait for the ambulance or do you want to make your own way to hospital? Ambulances are dispatched according to clinical need, but when demand is high, some patients may prefer to make their own way to hospital. If it was me and I had never phoned 999 before, I would expect an ambulance to be there quite quickly. So giving them that delay time lets them understand that we will get someone to you, but we are very busy in the area, so there could be a delay. And most people are either happy waiting on the delay or it might mean that they just want to get themselves up to the hospital a little bit quicker. Right, I need you to... OK, but I need... Right. Right, I need you to listen to these instructions before I let you go, OK? So if she becomes less awake and she vomits, quickly lay her onto her side. And if you feel she gets worse in any way, call us back immediately for further instructions and we'll get someone there as quickly as we can. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're building a mental image in your head as to what's actually happening and, and then the crew get there and you're literally just disconnecting from that call and just onto your next. That can be quite hard sometimes. Literally just switching off and just putting that to the back of the head and just going on to the next one because there's more people waiting to, to get through emergencies. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Is the patient awake? We're going to a pub in the city centre for an elderly male that's fallen over. So that's all we know at the moment. It's been a busy night in Aberdeen for Scott and Rachel. They have dealt with two drunk patients already. And there's still half an hour of their shift left. There was a lot of intoxicated folk in a and &E, Was there? I, like, that were already in and things. Mm. Thursday's a new Friday, clearly. Clearly. <sighs> folk should be in their beds. Bedtime. Hello, pal. How we doing? That's it. You managed to get up and then fell over. Did he go face down? He landed on top of the sky here. OK. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I work for? Are you normally fitting well? I am. Right here. Have you any medical problems at all? No. No. Do you take any regular medication? What? I don't understand. Well, you've had a fall tonight, and the staff have phoned us to check you're OK. You know what I'm doing tomorrow? Are you? There was only a few kind of stragglers in the bar left as it was quite late on. So I think the fact that he'd been quite intoxicated, he'd uh, lost his footing and fell on the floor. But it was quite, um, it was quite obvious straight away that he hadn't any sort of serious injuries. Listen. Do you think we can get you out to the ambulance and we'll give you a proper check-up out there? No, I need that. What? Do you think he needs that? No, I need that. Well, I think everyone needs a check-up if they've had a wee fall. 
it can be really hard to move drunk people because they're a dead weight if they're that intoxicated. Absolutely. Give us your arm, pal. Yeah. We need to get you off the floor. But for this gentleman, he he was merry. You know, he was all right. Right, we need you to stand up. One, push, two, push, 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 push. Oh, oh my goodness. What's been it? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> he could stand on his own two feet. He was incredibly tall compared to Scott and I, but uh, he was still easily moved. Bend in the middle and sit down. There we go. There we go. That's a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. You might become a nurse. All oh, right, okay. Oh, sorry, I'm just taking your temperature. Do me a wee favour. Just sit nice and still for me. All right, pal? Despite being intoxicated, the patient appears physically fit. So the crew attempt to contact friends and family to collect him. What's your phone number? Has it got a house number? No idea. Our plan was to try and get a place of safety for him, and it was quite difficult to try and understand where he was staying at the moment. Right. He's got keys. He's got keys here. Sorry, Pat. I'm just checking to see if there's anything with a number on it. Ambulance Control have asked the police to help them find an address for the patient. What's your phone number? Do you know your phone number? Oh. Yeah, I was just looking to see if there's any update, pal. Uh, really well, um, they are reviewing, but uh, no real update at the moment, I'm afraid of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a case of a, they won't be having to, like, uh, do anything. It's just a case of, uh, to assist us with a, um, a place of safety for the gentleman once we get hold of his family. With the pub closed and their own shift now over, Rachel tries to contact the police directly. Hello, my name's Rachel. I'm calling from the ambulance service. I know this isn't the right way to come through you guys, but we're with an intoxicated male who basically requires to go home to a place of safety. But this gentleman hasn't got clarification of his address. We're in a pub that needs to close and we physically can't do anything with him until we get this assistance from the police. Excellent, thanks so much. Thanks for your help. Cheers, bye-bye. Half an hour later, they're still in limbo. Basically, they're saying that they're, there's nothing for them to deal with because we, we get stuck with this problem all the time, right? So our problem is that he's drunk and incapable, which is an offence, but the police say he's intoxicated, which is an overdose, which is a medical matter. I think the problem was that we, we face this quite a lot on the road, that we get this grey area between the police and the ambulance, and I think that was probably one of the biggest issues we had that night, that the police thought we were going to try and pass off this guy to them, but we didn't want that at all. Eventually, Scott and Rachel are advised someone is on their way. But when she arrives, it's not the help that they'd hoped for. Well, please just call in. Are you actually kidding me? Yeah, probably couldn't make this up, could you? I He said she's unconscious, is that correct? OK, so tell me exactly what's happened. At the control centre, Chloe is speaking with a caller who is helping a woman who is struggling to breathe. Now, we advise, just as a precaution, if there is a defibrillator available, to send someone to get it now in case we needed it later. There is one at the railway station. Unfortunately, not every defibrillator is registered for the ambulance service, so sometimes it is just local knowledge of to where people know where their closest one is, but most of the time they are registered on our system, so we'll be able to provide them with an exact location of where the defibrillator's kept, um, an access code to gain entry into the defibrillator. Are you right by her now? OK, so listen carefully. I need you to lay her flat on her back and remove anything from under her head. OK, so we're going to check her breathing together to make sure it's all right. 
So when I say the word go, I need you to watch her closely and say the word now every time her chest rises. Are you ready? Okay, go. It, you don't feel it rising. Right, okay. As soon as they tell me that they can't see a chest rising or falling, we're gonna go straight to the compressions because I would rather somebody started this than it being delayed any further. Now we're gonna pump the chest hard and fast at least twice. Okay, but sir, from, from but sir, from the information you've provided me with, okay, you can't see your chest rising fully, okay? So we're gonna to need to start those compressions on her. It can be more daunting when a caller wants to challenge you about what, what it is you need to be doing because at the end of the day, I don't wanna be arguing with someone over the phone about what's right and what's wrong. Is she awake at the moment? She's still unconscious. So what I need you to do then, sir, OK, is I need you to say the word now every time her chest rises. Are you ready? I think when people are first aid trained and they, they have this knowledge behind them, they, they can think it's a bit bizarre that we're given these instructions and that's, that's not what we're meant to be doing. But again, the more information we get from callers and people that are there, the more that we can feed that information into the system and the system will provide us with the the correct protocol to go down and the correct instructions to give. Hello, it's the ambulance service. I need you, to, sorry, if you could just listen to me, if the ladies, I need you to put her flat on her back for me and remove anything from underneath her head. Right, uh, well, I'm advising you, if she's unconscious at the moment, to put her flat on her back. Are you able to do that for me? So is she awake? It can be a little bit frustrating when you do get challenged, maybe in a negative way, from a first aider that thinks that we're just trying to do the opposite to helping them, when in actual fact we're given these instructions for set reasons. And whatever information they've provided us with is why we then give that instruction. Right, so if she... She's tried to open her eyes. Right, OK, well, that was, in, that was the information that we were provided with, OK? OK, so she's awake at the moment. Is that, is that, is that the ambulance crew there? Right, I'll leave you with the crew. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. The crew got there, and she was breathing and she was conscious, which is the the main important thing. Oh. It's 1.30 in the morning in Aberdeen. Scott and Rachel are attending an intoxicated patient who cannot remember where he lives. And they can't leave the pub until a friend or family member comes to collect him. So where have you been tonight? <laughs> what are you sorry for? When a woman does arrive, she's in no condition to help the patient either. And it looked as though she did a pirouette around the lamppost and then just hut the deck. Um, so at that point, I thought, well, we're going to have to go and assess her as well now. We need to get them both to hospital, I think. I just wanted to give her a quick kind of head to toe to make sure there was no obvious sort of injuries from our fall. Come on, up you go. Head, head, Let's get you inside out of the cold because you're freezing. But once inside the pub, the woman becomes highly emotional and upset. What is she doing? Calm down. What's this about? The woman is inconsolable. Stop it! Well, you're going to. Yeah, can we get urgent police assistance, please? Right, right, listen, listen! Throwing yourself on the floor is not helping anybody. Right. Can you please stop? Right, stop what? Right. You need yeah. to get with it. You need to get real. No, 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 no. no. Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off. Don't do that. The woman lunges at Scott. Do I what? Have any empathy? Empathy, I do, but you're certainly not hurting my colleagues or grabbing out at them. And she kind of just like threw herself up and just went to grab Scott. And I said, that's when I was like, no, get off him, because well, that's what you're going to do. You're not going to let him suffer. Or I'm not going to let him suffer. I'm sorry. 
Right. We're just trying to get to the bottom of what's going on here. So we've been trying to get in contact with you to see if you were able to look after him. Given the fact that you're intoxicated as well, we can't, we can't obviously put you home with him. It wasn't about us, it was about them. And I don't know if in her kind of drunken state on the ground, did she think she was away to launch at him? Like, you yeah. know, you, you, you just don't know. She was just too unpredictable. Yeah. I was relieved when the police arrived then. Um, we'd obviously been waiting for some amount of time for their assistance. Um, you know, and I think things escalated due to the times we were waiting. I'd like to know you I'm going to you for five minutes and all you've done is throw yourself on the ground. So what's your last Sorry? Let's stand up. Shut up. There we go. Fantastic. The good point is now that he's sobered up, yeah. so he's safe to be on yeah. his own. And this is what's sobered him up. Yeah. The big The police take the woman home and advise the man to stay in a hotel for the night. I think there was probably friction in the background there and things like that, and I think it had all maybe just come to a head, to be honest, and unfortunately, we were at the forefront of it. It's very important to have a good relationship with your crewmate, and you have to know each other inside out, so that if something happens, if a job goes downhill, you know you can rely on your colleague. You need to have that connection, you need to have that bond, you need to have that working relationship that's strong enough to get on well enough to be there for one another. Rachel and Scott have spent two hours dealing with this patient. Their shift finished one and a half hours ago. Paramedics are a fallback for everything. All ambulance staff, not just paramedics, but all ambulance staff. You know, we're the social workers, we're the physiotherapists, we're the kind of the GPs, we're the police sometimes, you know, it's just, we're just constant. According to latest figures, Scotland's paramedics respond to alcohol-related calls on average once every six minutes.